So sometime in 2016, I think it was September or October of 2016, I got into the enterprise of building my very first gaming PC. I knew I wanted to play Tom Clancy's The Division because it had some aspects of PC that I was missing out on on console. And I also wanted to possibly make YouTube videos or stream. So I found myself in a place where I was looking up all kinds of PC components and doing a lot of research. And I came across a video that was actually done by a gentleman named Austin Evans, who's a tech YouTuber. And he titled this video called The Boson 3.0, which was a $350 gaming PC that you could put together at that time. Now, believe it or not, this particular build was so popular, everyone was looking up this video and I myself was able to get a hold of this and I got almost exactly all the components that he recommended in this vi in this video and I built the computer. Now, according to him at that time, I remember him mentioning that if you built a computer of this magnitude, you could get anything better than a console performance, which was actually true. Back then, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One were still kind of lower than a lot of even low end gaming PCs. And this was a time when things were a lot more simpler. Today's day and age, games are getting more and more ambitious and PC components have been getting much more and incrementally more expensive with GPU mining and all the others. But GPU mining kind of died at the expanse of the technology. So many people don't realize that it feels like it's out of reach to get a gaming PC. But the truth is, it is absolutely not. Now, in looking at the specs of this Boson 3.0 build, uh, you'll see that back then the requirements to actually run this and that were actually better than the PlayStation 4 is not even up to the requirements that you need to play Gotham Knights today. I'm sure you were wondering if I was actually making a Gotham Knights video. Yes, I am. You see, the minimum specs eventually have come out the page where it is anyways, uh, is a you know, Google user content web cache. I don't even know if I should be showing this, but I think it's just a web cache of a page that existed on the internet. So this is something that I think the developers are eventually going to put out, but also take this with a grain of salt. I want to make sure I put that there because they wrote here preliminary specs shown and full specs will be updated at a later date. So minimum specs for Gotham Knights are asking for an Intel i Core, uh, Core i5-6600 or Ryzen 5 2600, with, which are about three gigahertz in terms of their frequency. And they're also requesting that you have a 1050 Ti minimum or an RX 570, which are four gigs VRAM cards. They also require that you have eight gigs of RAM, which is usually good for a low end gameplay, about 40 gigs of you know uh, hard drive storage, Windows 10, DirectX 12. And you're able to be able to pull out somewhere around 1080p, 60 FPS at low quality settings. And this takes me back to that, you know, entire, uh, you know, uh, thing that I was showing you, which is basically the components to build a PC. And at that time, even the components right now that you have for Gotham Knights are way better than this Boson, you know, 3.0 because I built this computer and it wasn't even sufficient enough to play at 60 frames per second for the division anyways. So I went ahead and I upgraded to something much closer to this Gotham Knights build that they're requiring, which was an i -Core, uh, Core i5-6500. So I went that route, I still got eight gigs of RAM and I was able to play the division at 60 FPS. I was able to record, make videos and kind of start off this whole YouTube thing. So this brings us to that conversation that we've been having where many folks have said, you know, and I saw a comment today, it was really interesting. Someone said, I feel like Gotham Knights can run on the PS4. Ladies and gentlemen, a feeling cannot guarantee a fact. And this is something that I understand that there's a little bit of like, you know, that disappointment there. But technical specifications have always been a pain in the butt. And I think that's what we basically in the Gotham Knights community, we got the raw end of that deal because the developers in their ambition throughout this console, you know, selection saying, yeah, we're going to be able to get you this game for this particular, you know, console and all. And then eventually realize that this could not necessarily be put in place. And so they decided that, man, why shoot ourselves in the foot? Why throw our, why throw our community under the bus? rather than just bring out a video game that's in working condition. And I think if these PC specs, which I say take with a grain of salt, are anything close to what the PC specs will be in terms of the minimum requirements, then I think this game was probably in a place where its scope could not be able to fit with the PlayStation 4 and still give you good quality. Now, granted, the PlayStation 4 was a console where you could make your games run at 30 FPS without any problems. So these are 60 FPS settings, all of the above. I get it. 
But in today's day and age, you at least want to be able to achieve good quality. And I don't know how the design of the game is going to be until we play it. So I think it was fair for them to just move on. Keep in mind also that other games like Cyberpunk 2077 released buggy PS4 versions and still got rewarded with 20 million copies, even though they got backlash. The backlash was only in mouth, but not in wallet. And so what I think for Gotham Knights and how I think that the game is actually going to go ahead and, you know, be presented is we're going to see the game actually run according to what I think the developers are trying to put out there. The challenge, though, that I see here is how the PlayStation 5 version is actually going to be put in place. I don't know if the developers actually have the you know specifications or at least how the game is going to be running on the PS5 and the Xbox Series consoles. This is going to be very, very important when it all comes full circle. Because yes, we can talk about the PC side, but the console side, how is it going to look? Is it going to be in a place where they have a version that can scale to fit and match the consoles? I think so, because we've already seen something that's kind of close to that. If you guys remember, the gameplay that we saw with the Red, uh, the Red Hood and Nightwing seem to have been played on a PS5. If you look at the button config on the right side of the screen, the bottom right side of the screen, you can see that the button config seems to show that you have some buttons that look like the PS5, uh, you know, select button. Also, if you watch the Batgirl gameplay, which was done in the first 16 minutes, IGN showed that. That looked very much like a PS5 version of the game. So I think that's pretty much what we're going to be seeing now. I don't know if that was being played on resolution mode or on performance mode, which I don't know if they have those options. So we're going to have to just kind of wait and see how all that comes in place. The thing that I'm looking forward to doing, anyone that's actually concerned, is that you're waiting and looking forward to reviews to showcase these things. It's going to be very important at that point to be able to get these details out there. But I want to go ahead and just share all this stuff with you guys here in the community. I really appreciate your time, you know, your time and audience. And uh, let me know what you think so far as to how the technology has come, if it's come full circle, if it's something you appreciate. And I'll be happy to chat in the comment section. So thanks so much once again. And hopefully we'll talk soon. Peace out.